This week, we're going to cover numerical solutions to ordinary dif differential equations. This, is, this topic is covered in Greenberg, Chapter 6. What I'll talk about in this video is first an introduction to methods of quantitative analysis, numerical methods being a very powerful and commonly used uh, example. And then I'll go over a very simple numerical method using Euler's equation. After showing you how to um, where or what Euler's equation is, we'll get it, I'll discuss the accuracy of Euler's equation and how to assess it. After viewing this video and working through the problems, you'll be able to write a computer program that solves a first order ODE using Euler's methods, and you'll explain be able to explain how the accuracy depends on the step size by which you discretize uh, a solution using uh, uh, numerical methods. So again, I'd like to encourage you to write out that objective And uh, I won't write it out for you now, but please uh, start your notes by writing out that objective and keep that in mind as you work through this video. Okay, so an introduction to numerical methods is the first topic. Now, so far, we've learned different ways of producing analytical solutions to, to an ODE. And, uh, for example, the first order uh, ODE was y prime is equal to some function of x and y. And these solutions, um, they can be written in closed form. Just, uh, just um, introducing you to some terminology. That is, you can write them on a using a pen and paper completely as um, y is equal to um, the solution. This is the big S being representing a function being the solution, and you can write it out completely, and um, the solution is exact. So we've learned how to produce exact closed form analytical solutions of the equation of this form. And that, that of course, is the best way to solve a, a differential equation. However, many differential equations, the, actually the ones that apply to real systems, are too complicated to solve analytically. Therefore, we must rely on different methods uh, to solve them. So in the case of numerical methods, they numerical methods produce approximate solutions at discrete points. And those approximate solutions are often very accurate.
but again at discrete points. These are discrete points in space or in time, depending on the problem. So numerical methods are extremely powerful ways in which scientists and engineers solve complex problems. For example, if you're designing an airplane, you would use a numerical analysis or numerical methods to predict, for example, the stress or fatigue on your, your airplane wing. Scientists use uh, numerical methods to study uh, or simulate ocean circulation, uh, tsunami wave uh, propagation, and how it affects coastlines. Uh, climate and weather modeling is done numerically, um, and many problems in earth science, um, solid earth science, such as earthquake predictions, um, magmatic processes, are addressed using numerical models. Now, one of the main drawbacks of numerical models is you cannot see how the answer depends on a particular variable in your equation. Uh, for example, when we looked at the mass on our spring, we saw the solution in terms of the mass of the object, um, the, uh, the constant on the spring, as well as the uh, coefficient of friction that described the, the, the viscous drag of the object on, on the surface of our uh, on the sur between the, the mass and the surface on which it was sliding. But in numerical methods, the direct relationships cannot be seen. So it's, uh, it's very important. Uh, it's just as important to, pr to produce the solution as it is to understand those relationships. So numerical methods require quite a bit of analyses to understand the relationships between those input parameters and the solutions. So that's just uh, some overall insight on numerical methods, and you'll appreciate those aspects if you start uh, using them and applying them to a particular problem. But now let's get into uh, sort of the practical aspects of the class, and that's looking at um, solving a numerical problem, uh, an ODE, using Euler's method. And again, the problem at hand is solving the slope of y, y prime, as a function of x, being described as a general function. So again, this is the slope of y as a function of x. And um, so, so that's that's the problem. Oh, and and we may have an initial condition that y at point a is equal to b. This is our initial condition. So let's, let's uh, I'm going to sketch out an example that uh, Greenberg shows in a figure. So we have x and y, and we are given the solution of the slope. And so we're, if we know we're given the slope and, and we're asked to solve what y is in at various points in space. So here I'm, I'm sort of drawing little tick marks representing the slope at various locations. And I'm showing the slope increasing as you increase in both y and x, for example. So this again is the, the slope f as a function of x and y. And the idea behind Euler's method is to start at our, our starting point, x sub 0 is again equal to uh, point A, this is our initial, con this is our starting point which, uh, for which our initial condition is defined, and that initial condition, for example, is y is equal to to b. So uh, y0 is equal to b. So our starting point is right here. And to illustrate Euler's method, what we're going to do is we're going to estimate the value at y. And again, the estimate can be quite accurate depending on our method. 
and we're going to estimate it at um, various points, x1, x2, x3, for example. And this is by dividing our, our space into discrete points, we're, we're discretizing our system. And here, the spacing between these different points is what we'll refer to as h. That's the spacing by which we discretize our model space. And so, to, to outline the method, we're going to start off at our initial condition. And we know what the slope is at this point. So we're going to project our solution along that slope to our next point in space, x1. Okay, so this is our estimate for y1. And then starting from y1, since we have an estimate for y1, we know where we are in xy space, so we'll, we'll project along the slope evaluated at that point, which might look um, something like this. And we'll project that to uh, point x2. And since we know what our, we have an estimate for our new position at x2, we can evaluate what the slope is using our function. And uh, we, we can then project along that slope to our new point, x3. And y3. So this is x2 y2, this was x1, y1, and so forth. So, so you can see, so this is a summary of the strategy. Now let's, let's sh show how we're going to go, go about doing it. So again, the first step was to start at our initial condition, that is y of a is equal to b, and that is x0 is equal to a, and y0 is equal to b. This is our starting point. And then we're going to project along a line of slope f evaluated at point a and evaluated at point b. And we're going to project across a distance across the distance in x of, say, delta x is equal to h. And this gives us y1. Um, at point x1. So, that, so projecting along that first slope gives us this first point. And then the second step is to start at x1, y1, project along the slope f evaluated at x1, y1, a distance h to get y2 at point x2. And then we pre repeat the solution, or re repeat the procedure for subsequent values of x's and y's. So it's a pretty simple method, and um, conceptually it's quite simple, and it's also relatively simple to write out. And so we can write out the solution at point n plus 1 as being equal to the solution at point n plus, when we project along the slope, our slope is f evaluated at xn, yn, 
and the projection is over a distance h. So this is our run, this is our rise over run, and so uh, this gives the, um, the net change in y from um, point n. And so we can, so Euler's method is written out like this, and we're going to do this for n equals 1, 2, 3, starting at, um, uh, point A and B. Actually, to be consistent with my uh, initial notation, we would start at n equals uh, 0. So n would go from 0 to 1, 2, and 3, etc. So let's, let's show how we would write that out uh, in, a in a MATLAB type code. So, for example, we would um, so we would define h. Say we we would do that by saying um, h is equal to some number. And we would define the vector x is equal to say a, um, which it was already defined, um, in increments of h to our maximum, the point, uh, the maximum point at which we want the solution, x max. So, of course, these need to be defined, a and x max, max need to be defined. And I like to make this a column vector by make, putting a prime there, and then we put our semicolon. So when we run it, we don't see the whole vector um, display on the screen. And so we might uh, create a variable called nmax is equal to the, the total number of elements in our vector. And that would be length x. And then we could write a for loop, which in which n is a variable that varies from 0 to n max minus 1. So this is going to vary n from 0 in increments of 1 up to uh, 1 minus, n max minus 1. And we would say, for example, that um, y of um, at point n plus 1, the n plus 1 num value of vector y is equal to y, the nth value of y, plus whatever our function of the slope is times our, uh, our um, step size. Okay, so for example, Greenberg uh, shows a case in which the problem at hand is y prime is equal to y plus 2x minus x squared. And with that example, we would write y of n plus 1 is equal to y at point n plus... Now the slope is y at point n plus 2 times, and you need the dot star to multiply each value in vector x by 2, minus x and then a dot caret to raise it to the second power, to raise each number in x to the second power. So again, this is the slope given by this function. Oh, and I, of course, I have to multiply it by our step size. And then we end it. And so this would produce solutions at each of the points all the way up to uh, this point x max. And that's a simple um, 
This is basically the essence of a code that applies Euler's method. So I think I'll end this video here and uh, talk about errors in the next one. So again, we had an introduction to numerical methods, and we talked about um, how to the Euler, use how, how to use Euler's equation for a very simple way to numerically approximate the solution for a first-order ODE.